Hello and welcome to the Rugged Rock Hound. Today I'm here with quite a few other people. Say hi everybody. <laughs> we got Utah Rocks, we got my friend Tim, uh, we got some of Utah Rocks kids and his dad and we are gonna go up here. It's a private mining claim. We're gonna go meet the claim owner and we're gonna have a fun day digging for Topaz, Bixby, whatever else they have here. Pink Topaz. Pink Topaz. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. It was cold last So here night. we are. We're here with Jeremy, the claim owner. How are you doing, Jeremy? Good. How are you guys doing today? Great. Oh, you can see the big equipment out. Absolutely. Hey, look at that. Absolutely. We're going to be digging in here. Okay, what are we looking for? So we're looking for Bixbyite and Pink Topaz. So what's special about solar wind is you get Pink Topaz instead of the clear. So when it, the normal Topaz fades, it'll fade to a water clear. This actually fades to pink and it's pretty special. And the reason is it has trace uh, amounts of manganese inside, and the manganese is a coloring agent. So when you actually collect the topaz, it'll be like a peachy color. And I actually got a piece here to show you guys that we got yesterday. Oh, great. I can get it out of my pocket here. Wrong pocket. Now it's find the topaz. <laughs> yeah, and then you also get Bixbyite, so. What's this That's great. Here's a example. Oh, that's okay. It, it looks, the color is very Whoa. close to that. It is close, but it'll fade to a What's pink this? and then it's stable color. So interesting. So we actually are getting these cut and uh, they make beautiful, beautiful cut like stones. How long does it take to fade to the pink? About two weeks. So two about weeks. the same as it takes for the other Yeah, almost colors. identical. Okay. That's Bixbyite. You found a Bixbyite. That's a big And then uh, Bixbyite. pink topaz was on the side of it. Wow. There's a little bit of a topaz. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that that cool. Just Ooh, sitting right there. That's not a bad piece right there. Wow. There go. Yeah. That's a that's a good uh, find. <laughs> up find right. right there. <laughs> <laughs> I <didn't forget. laughs> well, hey, got a new <laughs> worker. Yeah. Exactly. That's a beautiful piece. That is nice. So that's what you're looking for. And what's neat about the Bixbyite here is <clears> this is a world class location. This is the best Bixbyite in the world. I'm excited. Really? Yes, absolutely. It's number one. So what do they do with Bixby? Is it just it's a, a specimen. Uh, basically, you have Display private specimen. collectors, and then you actually do they we have cut some it? in the do museum. They, do they, you don't cut it. No, it's it's, it's specimen just, only. Just specimen. When they come out, what's neat is they have a tetragonal trisoctahedral modification on the edge. Uh -huh. The normal um, cubit is a cubic form for Bixbyite. Mm -hmm. That's a normal crystal form for Bixbyite. Yeah. But these ones are very neat. We, let's see that piece again. I can show you. So instead of being cubic on the edge, you can see it kind of looks like almost like a Mercedes Benz logo uh, yeah. on the edge there. Yeah. That's a tetragonal tetris octahedral modification. It's very special. And the reason why it forms that way is you have pressure temperature drops when they're forming and they're, they don't form the full cube, but they make these beautiful modifications on the edge though. So that's oh. what makes it really special here. That's cool. So there you have it, the Solar Winds claim. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you would like to go and schedule a time with him. He loves to bring people out here and you can schedule, it doesn't cost too much and you can come out and dig for some stuff yourself. So go check out his webpage. Take a look at the link. So what we're looking for is Bixbyite, Pink Topaz, Sudabrookite, and you'll also see purple standing on the rock, that's fluorite. So when there's excess fluorine fluids, it'll come up and create the, the flor, uh, fluorite on the rock. Uh, basically, the primary ways we screen, we do screening here, uh, but you also work the rock. You guys have been to Topaz Mountain, so you know, mm -hmm. similar. They're all good. They're all good. <laughs> They're, every one of these are good. But I almost recommend down here, Galia, John's wife, was digging down here on this side here, right here in this hole and this hole. And she did. She got some great topaz and some nice Bixbyite combos. You can see these seams; they're vertical seams, and some of them are uh, not quite vertical, but they, they trend vertical. Like people are like, "That's not vertical." I said, "Well, it's trending down." It's good. Yeah. It's still going down. Yeah, basically these. these but it'll branch out. To it'll the branch sides. out. So you got a picture, kind of like a uh, trunk of a tree that comes up and then it branches off. So what we're looking for when we mine is the trunk of the tree, if we can get it or at least, at least a big branch. Sure. All right, here we go. Come on, nicely. Come on, All right, let me get beneath it and catch anything that might fall. 
Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Look at that. It's purple. Yeah, that's the fluorite. Yep. Oh, look at that specimen right there. There's yeah, pseudoburkite right yep, there. Yep, I just found a Okay, let's bring you in close here. Tim just opened a, exposed a vein of beautiful topaz. You know what? Can you hold it just a minute? Yep. I'm gonna get the macro lens. So look at this pocket he just poked. Topaz all through it, fluorite, pseudobrookite. Show him that one piece you found. Oh, this. Look at this piece of pseudobrookite he just found. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. And look at all this stuff coming down. So there's the yep. other side of the vein that we broke into. I, I, you can see pseudobrookite all over, topaz all over, fluorite. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, Tim. Ah, oh, there we go. There's some right there. At Utah Rocks just knocked another piece off. We've got a topaz loose right there. Actually, a couple. I'll grab them really quick before they fall. Phew. Loose topaz there. But right here on the other side, we got that nice. And look at that pocket. All right, let's expose that. So that's Pseudobrookite right there. That is a big Bixbyite. <laughs> Look at that. Utah Rocks just found a huge Bixbyite. Oh, that's a beautiful specimen. Right in there. <laughs> wow. Right here, Jeremy and his partner found this really, really nice Bixbyite. Look at the size of that thing. Yeah, Pseudobrookite and pink topaz. For scale. So he finished jackhammering all of this out. We've been clearing out. We've pulled some nice things out of here. We'll have to clean them up before we can see them really well. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and just keep digging into this zone through here and just see what we can pull out. Hey, there you go, right there. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna screen through. I'm gonna go through the screen now and see if I can find anything. We found that thing. There's a piece. Nice. There are so many little topaz crystals in here. All right, it's been a little while since I took a, took any video. I was, we didn't find anything for a while. And then I went up over in kind of a hard spot up there found some pretty good stuff we'll have to clean it off for you to be able to see it but pretty well so that'll have to come after after this video well let's go see what this poor soul over here has been finding <laughs> when i say poor soul it's because he's been finding all kinds of good stuff <laughs> look at this pile of amazingness just all over <laughs> yeah it's been good He's had a, he's had a good day. It's a good spot. <laughs> it's a great spot. Okay, we are sifting through some of the tailings here that came from the excavator behind us. And we're definitely doing better up here than we were in the pockets. Tim found this rock that had a nice pocket on it right there. Got a few things. I've already found a few good crystals myself. And right over here, I think it's over here. Whew. I found that crystal. <laughs> so I'm gonna screen that right now and see how it goes. That nice little cluster. That in the pocket. Yeah, some fluorite. <laughs> Fix me out. That pocket. Yeah, we're definitely having much more success up here. Just let the excavator do the work. Yep. More topaz. 
Oh, what a tin pine. Hey, there. I mean, it's a little bit fractured. Oh, okay. We're, we're going to take a look at that one. <laughs> that one. Ugh, that's a nice one. Well done, Tim. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this nice stuff. So, I mean, here's a nice Jemmy, Jemmy Topaz here. Oh, look at that. But there's one even better. He's got one here. Oh, look at that. So, I mean, that's not huge for pink Topaz, but that, I'd say that's on a larger scale. So, on the bell curve, it would be on the, the right side of the bell curve. Um, Bixby, I, this is about a uh, push in large. It's not, I mean, we get them up to an inch. This is probably about uh, six tenths of an inch is my guess. Maybe seven tenths of an inch, but we get them pushing an inch. Oh, yeah. But that's a big Bixby, I, And you can see the modifications on the edge. It's a tetragonal tris octahedral. And see how it's serrated there? It right. almost looks serrated. Right, it does. So that's very unique uh, wow. for this mine. You don't really find like the rest of the Bixbyite in the range is not modified like this. It's perfect cubes. So if you find Bixbyite in the cove, it's going to be a perfect, well, it should be a perfect cube. Sometimes they're a little bit off, but most right. of the time they're perfect cubes. Wow. We found this yesterday. Unwrapping, he doesn't remember what it and is. And there's a lot of toilet paper, so it's got to be good. All right. Better be, better not be anticlimactic here. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Oh yeah, be careful with this one. If oh, you handle it. look at that. See how it's almost, uh, so you got three got topaz. Little, it's got yeah, a little pseudobrookite. Horns or ears, what do you want to call them? I call them horns, yeah. There's actually three topaz. You got one here, one here, and one here. And that's rare. We get some that have, and this will all clean up too, real nice. There's a pseudobrookite off the side of it. Oh, I see that little thing. This, this one's big money, this so, one. Do the topaz go through that's it? Nice. Or? See the cross too on the face? Yeah. So do the topaz yeah. go through the Bixby or? Yeah, so uh, they, they form at different pressures and temperatures. So the topaz actually forms first, and then the Bixbyite forms second. So okay. uh, it's just uh, how they form, you know, so they don't form at the exact same time. We're getting ready to head out. It's getting chilly, a little windy and the sun's going down. So we're getting ready to head out. <laughs> and I didn't film quite a bit, mostly because a lot of the stuff, I, I did a lot of screening and the stuff was so covered in dirt, you just couldn't see it. And so I decided to just forego filming for the most part and wait until I got home so I could clean them all off. So yeah, I didn't film a lot of things and I got a little excited a few times. <laughs> but you'll at least get to see it cleaned up. So we're gonna head back now and I'll get all that stuff cleaned up. All right, I'm back from the dig. It's actually been a couple weeks. It's been about two, a little over two weeks since I actually got back from the dig where we found all the cool topaz and Bixbyite and other cool minerals. And it's winter now. It's getting cold out here. Winter is just setting in and we're supposed to be getting some snow in the next several days. So, yay. <laughs> rock counting season may be over soon. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the specimens we found and see what we got. I'm gonna start with the specimens that I found. So here's a nice rock. It's got some topaz and some pseudobrookite crystals you can see right there. Very nice. Here's some more topaz on a rock. Here's my Bixbyite crystals. I like their shiny surfaces. Got some fluorite right here. And here's a nice little combo that's got topaz, pseudobrookite, and Bixbyite. So Bixbyite is the black square cubic, well, cubic like crystals with an interesting shape. The, the pseudobrookite is these long, black, thin crystals, and then, of course, the topaz is yellow. Here are my topaz crystals. Now I'm only showing you the nicer specimens, the ones that turned out a little better. We actually found quite a few. In fact, 
Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. A lot of good stuff. I'm just kind of showing you some of the uh, bigger ones. So here's some of the better ones Tim found. Now Tim definitely did better with the Pseudobrookite. I mean, not Pseudobrookite, <laughs> Bixbyite. Getting my things mixed up. He found a lot of good Bixbyite crystals. This was my favorite, nice big one with some other things on it. So yeah, Tim got really good Bixbyite. He also did pretty well with the Topaz. Like I said, I did a little better with the Topaz. And Pseudobrookite's hard to keep intact, so not much survived, just kind of showing that off. So this is one that I found. It has a crack in it, and you can see a nice large Bixbyite in there, some Pseudobrookite. I'll probably just leave it as it is, maybe try and chip a little bit of this away to expose it a little better. I don't know, I'm trying to decide exactly what to do with it right now. And the find of the dig for Tim and I, which we kind of found together, Tim was the one that pointed it out though. He's the one that's suggested the area, so most of the credit goes to him. But it's a nice vein that was full of fluorite, topaz crystals, some pseudobrookite, and a few Bixbyites. Just this really cool vein that ran through this large rock. And those are the specimens we found. We found quite a bit, a lot of topaz, a lot of Bixbyite. It was great. Tim and I had a wonderful time out there. So once again, a huge thank you to Jeremy Fuller for letting us come out to his claim and film. It was fantastic. If, like I said earlier, but if you want to go to one of his claims, Jeremy has several claims out in the Topaz Mountain area. If you want to go check out his claims, there's a link down below where you can go to his website and you can schedule to go out to his claim. The price is very reasonable. The stuff I got out of it was easily worth two or three times what I paid. It was fantastic. Actually, he kind of let us out free this time. Next time I go though, I'll have to pay, but totally worth it. I'll, I'll be more than happy to pay the price going out again, and I plan to go out in the future. And again, thank you to Utah Rocks for joining me on another adventure and for kind of getting the whole thing set up. So it was a wonderful time, and remember, there's treasure everywhere. Mm -hmm.